unclear about it. S.H.I. The Gulag Archipelago. Agricultural activity, a new type of harvesting. The wave of those caught doing this was not small it included many tens of thousands of peasants, many of them not even adults but boys, girls, and small children whose elders had sent them out at night to sniff, because they had no hope of receiving anything from the collective farm for their daytime labor. For this bitter and not very productive occupation, an extreme of poverty to which the peasants had not been driven even in serfdom, the courts handed out a full measure. Ten years for what ranked as an especially dangerous theft of socialist property under the notorious law of August 7, 1932 which in prisoners' lingo was known simply as the Law of Seven Eights. This law of seven eights produced another big, separate wave from the construction projects of the first and second five-year plans from transport, trade, and industry. Big thefts were turned over to the NK. BB. This wave must further be kept in mind as one that kept on flowing steadily for the next 15 years, until 1947, especially during the war years. Then in 1947 the original law was expanded and made more harsh. Now at last we can catch our breath. Now at last all the mass waves are pointing to an end. Comrade Molotov said on May 17, 1933, We do not see our task as being mass repressions. You, at last, be gone, nighttime fears. But what's that dog howling out there? Go get him, go get him, and here we are. The Kirib wave from Leningrad has begun. While it lasted the tension was acknowledged to be so great that special staffs of the NK. BD were set up in each and every district executive community of the city and an accelerated judicial procedure was introduced. Even earlier, it had not been famous for being slow, and there was no right of appeal. There had been no appeal earlier. It is also believed that one quarter of Leningrad was purged, cleaned out in 1934-1935. Let this estimate be disproved by those who have the exact statistics and are willing to publish them. To be sure, this wave took in much more than Leningrad alone. It had a substantial impact on the rest of the country in a form that was consistent though chaotic. The firing from the civil service of all those still left there whose fathers had been priests, all former noblewomen, and all persons having relatives abroad. Among such lashing waves as this, certain modest, changeless, the history of our sewage disposal system I-59, Wavelets always got lost. They were little heard of, but they, too, kept flowing on and on. There were Schutz Viendlers who had lost the class battles in Vienna and had come to the fatherland of the world proletariat for refuge. There were Esperantists a harmful group which Stalin undertook to smoke out during the years when Hitler was doing the same thing. There were the unliquidated remnants of the free philosophic society illegal philosophical circles. There were teachers who disagreed with the advanced laboratory team system of instruction. In 1933, for instance, Natalia Ivanovna Gutayenko was arrested by the Rostov GPU. But in the third month of her Yeah.
First of all there was a category I have not yet named, a wave that was continually flowing. Section 10, also known as RA, counter-revolutionary agitation, and also known as ASA, anti-Soviet agitation. The wave of Section 10 was perhaps the most constant of all. It never stopped, and whenever there was another big wave, as, for instance, in 1937, 1945, and 1949, its waters became particularly swollen. Point two seven. Paradoxically enough, every act of the all-penetrating, eternally wakeful organs, over a span of many years, was based solely on one article of the 140 Articles of the Non-General Division of the Criminal Sea, Oath of 1926. One can find more epithets in praise of this article than Turgenev once asked Tilda M. B. Led to praise the Russian language, or Nekrasov to praise Mother Russia. Great, powerful, abundant, highly ramified, multi-form, wide-sweeping 58, which summed up the world not so much through the exact terms of its sections as in their extended dialectical interpretation. Among us has not experienced its all-encompassing embrace. In all truth, there is no step, thought, action, or lack of action under the heavens which could not be punished by the heavy hand of Article 58. The article itself could not be worded in such broad terms, but it proved possible to interpret it this broadly. Article 58 was not in that division of the code dealing with political crimes, and nowhere was it categorized as political. No, it was included, with crimes against public order and organized gangsterism, in a division of crimes against the state. Thus the criminal code starts off by refusing to recognize anyone under its jurisdiction as a political offender. All were simply criminals. Article 58 consisted of 14 sections. In section 1 we learn that any action and, according to 27, this particular unremitting wave grabbed up anyone at all at any moment. But when it came to outstanding intellectuals in the 30s, they sometimes considered it cleverer to fabricate a case based on some conspicuously shameful violation, like Peter Asti, or, in the case of Professor Platnik. The allegation that, left alone with a woman patient, he bit her breast. A national newspaper reports such an incident and just try to deny it. The history of our sewage disposal system I-61, 